In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up margins on your artboard in Kittle, a recent new feature and one that I know is gonna help you a ton, especially if you're setting up something like eBooks or if you're designing eBook covers or just book covers in general, or really anything else, work guides, digital products, margins are fantastic and they are necessary for a lot of things. So let's dive in to the editor here. By the way, if you're new here, you can check out the link in the description and get started in Kittle for free. Let's set up how to do it. So. I just edited this template here that was really really nice it was originally a book cover but i changed the cover to say to do in bloom so let's say that this may be like a to-do list book or a to-do list guide or template that i'm going to be putting together to sell on either amazon kdp or etsy or just on my website or whatever so i've changed it to say to do in bloom i think that's great maybe this is for the hunt family or something like this and then we have this really beautiful to-do list where you can either print this out or maybe make this digital or something like that so in order to make sure that someone one can download this and adhere to normal printing depending on their printer unless you give some specific instructions or guides or something we want to just go ahead and set up the margin so that we don't operate outside of what this person might be designing so I'm not gonna go into too many specifics on like what the size should be because you're gonna have to go and decide where you're designing or setting this up for as well as what the margin should be are they just gonna print it at home or is this gonna actually gonna be a physical book but but to do that, if you'll notice over here in the right, it says margin, and I have this artboard selected, therefore I am going to click margin, and so you can already tell, by default it goes to 45 pixels, you could set this over into inches, but generally we want to make sure that we're not designing too far out based on the qualifications of whatever printer, or like you know a sheet of paper at home or something like that, which is usually set to, I think it's around 0.125 or 0.25 or whatever for a normal eight and a half by 11. This is probably a little bit bigger than that because it was set up for a book. So you need to go check what the actual specifications for the margin is. If you ever want to set your project from what it is to something else, you can go up in this top left hamburger menu. You can go down to settings. You can change it to inches. So now you can see 0.75 five which is probably over what you would need for a normal sheet of paper i think it's 0.25 is oh, that may be actually a little bit not enough uh maybe it's 0.45 actually it looks pretty good but anyway let's just assume that it's going to be 0.75 right we're just going to go to the max make sure that definitely looks like more than enough for whatever the printing or the print on demand or whatever needs and so we just want to make sure that everything that we're going to do doesn't come outside of this right otherwise we potentially risk some Something happening right with where the printer is going to print on top of just because a printer can print something at full bleed maybe doesn't necessarily mean that the printer is going to be focusing the design on one separate section especially if it is on top of a book right so they're kind of like the book is already a color and then the design that's going on is going to be on a specific place I don't really have a great way to explain that maybe just imagine a leather bounded book that is going to be in engraved the leather is already on the book it's already that color you're taking the book and then you're putting it underneath the laser engraver and then the laser engraver has a section that it is going to be working on maybe think about it like that just really depends on your printer specifications you can look up a lot of tutorials about that on YouTube but let's just say we want to make sure we stay in the safe zone okay so whatever your margin is we're gonna be inside of it and then we can play with this and we could even make this a little bit bigger we just want to make sure we don't go outside of the margin okay and then maybe for this one let's say that this is just the cover and then for this one let's say we want to have even stricter rules to make sure that no text gets messed up or whatever we can go over here and still click margin and then maybe we want it to be a little bit more intense so maybe instead of 0.7 we want it to be 0.8 Eight. And so now all of them have shrunk in, right? So you still have that checkbox. There's no issue. Again, this just depends on the printer specification. Maybe it's the same exact as the cover. Maybe it's different. However, maybe if you're actually going to do this for something like KDP, you need a different left size and a different right size. So let's say you open this up and this is actually going to be the first right page, meaning the left side of the page probably needs to have more margin. So if you need to do that, you can go over into this button that says link settings and you can click it and now the link is broken the chain is broken oh no it's broken 
meaning you can now adjust any one of these independently. So if we need that little bit of extra margin on the left side that's gonna be sunk down into the binding of the book, we need to go to our left side margin, and then you can actually just go up or down with your arrow keys, and you can add more. So let's say we go all the way to an inch, and boom, you can see there it's all the way up into the left, and then for this one, maybe on the right side, we actually don't need so much, so we can go down to something like back to 7.5 and then we have adjusted our left and the right side margin so again I'm not going into too many specifications in this video on what the margins should be because I'm not really sure for your project you're gonna have to kind of figure that out whether or not it needs to be set into pixels or inches and then what the actual left and the right and the top of the bottom should be but here's what's really really neat is now that I have this one done I could go to do, I can hold the alter the option key, click and drag, which will duplicate it and check out what's happening. Did you see this? The margin is still there. So no matter what I do, it doesn't matter where I do, I can hold the alter option key, click and drag, drag this anywhere the margin is on there. Absolutely amazing. You don't have to, by the way, hold alter option key and drag. You can actually just select it. You can right click copy and paste. You can actually just select it, command or control C, and then command or control V, and it will actually duplicate to the right side of your artboard. So you don't have to use the alter option key and drag, but it is the fastest method. And so this is such a great way to make sure that you have margin set in the right place. And then if you want to go on and make sure, you know, maybe you want each of these to be themed something different, I like using the Copilot to check out what's in the same kind of category as this like eucalyptus type thing, this kind of floral. And so maybe instead of this one, we want it to be, I don't know, this one. Okay. And then we can put that in right here. Okay. We can go into here, ungroup it. I'm not going to do this whole thing, but this and delete this. And then, you know, maybe you can, you can have different florals for each one. Oops, I'm just destroying this entire project. I was not prepared to edit this template, but you see what I mean. Like, instead of this kind of greenery, it is now this kind of greenery. And you can keep opening up the Copilot, and it's going to keep showing you different suggestions for all of this. Or maybe you want to type in flower. Instead of green, it's going to be red roses, and the next to-do list says something else, and the next, so following along. Anyway, the point of this video was to show you how to set up margins, which, by the way, again, is over on the right side side here where it says margin. You still have the option to check out all of the other editing capabilities. And if you ever want to turn the margin off, let's say it's just annoying and you just don't want to see it or somebody has been invited to the project, which you can do now with real time collaboration, you want to turn it off. Well, you can go over here and you can go into view and you can actually just turn the margin off. So you see that you can turn it on or turn it off. So I would probably keep mine on by default if that's how I'm doing it, but that's how you can do it. You can go over there and you shift it on and off and you have complete control over each one of the margin, left, right, top, and the bottom. So let me know what you think. I know that was kind of a quick crash course. All I wanted to do is really show you how to turn the margin on as well as some of the functionality as to why you would do it. But let me know in the comments what you think. Are you gonna use margin? Let me know what you're creating in Kittle that you would need margin for. We did have a lot of people asking for it, myself included. And now that we have it, I think I'm gonna be using it a whole lot more. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Kittle channel because it helps us out so, so much. And hey, if somebody is interested in design or a beginner or getting into it or maybe searching for a design tool like this, please share the video with them or share any of the other 840 something videos on the YouTube channel that may interest them because that also helps us out a ton. So don't forget to subscribe, make sure you comment, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.